the Bible tells us in Matthew verse chapter 23, it describes the Pharisees and says this, you have kept people from entering the kingdom of God. Imagine that. People who wanted to come in. He said this about the Pharisees. You kept them from coming in. And then he said, you wouldn't go in yourself and you kept others out. You see, in a church service, a true vessel of God will address sin, will address judgment, will address addiction and pain. You can't say that you want people to have happiness if you don't want them to repent. You can't say that you want people to be set free if you're giving them an excuse to keep their handcuffs and their chains. When I tell you about sexual sin, I'm not doing that to judge you. I'm not doing that to make you feel ashamed. I'm doing it to give you hope. Watch how seamless this is. I will stand here and look over there and say, God can heal your cancer without batting an eye. Shouldn't I be able to then say, God can heal your perversion? Because your perversion and your cancer are both destroying you. Somebody help me right now. Ladies and gentlemen, fake preaching has created fake Christians. We sent them out. We created fake Christians that went out and met a real devil. They were ill-equipped. They crashed and burned. They lost it. In 2 Corinthians, it says, examine yourself to see if you're even in the faith. See if you're in. There is nothing in the world more debatable in the modern uh, conversation than this one. What is a Christian? What is a Christian? And in our evolution of that, and what we've come to believe is that, I don't believe the Bible is the word of God, but I'm a Christian. Amy, Amy Abby Johnson, who made the film Unplanned, said, I assisted in 22,000 abortions, but I went to church every Sunday. While I was doing that, I, I went to church every Sunday. Here is what happens when a fake preacher gets up. He talks to you and says, here's how much you can keep and still be right with God. The person who listens to as the slave trader who became a Christian that said, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Now I want you to look at me for a moment. You say, Mar, why are you preaching this? Because this is my last night. This is the most important night. This is the night of power. This is the night of absolute, they're gonna be miracles. We're gonna be here and we're gonna get blessed. But watch what I'm telling you. Many of you are in the worst form of spiritual danger. You're in more danger than the prostitute selling your body today in downtown. You're in more danger than the murderer, the cocaine addict, and even the atheist. Because all of them have one thing in common. None of them are fooling themselves believing they're Christian. So one day, so one day a person who I think was probably a good person came to a well to get water. And there was Jesus and the Bible says he was tired. And he looked at her and he said, would you give me water? And let's just read it. So he came to the city of Samaria. 
near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now jo Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being wearied from the journey and thus by the, sat by the well. And it was the sixth hour, a woman of Samaria came to draw and Jesus said to her, give me water to drink. For his disciples had gone away to the city to buy food. Woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you being a Jew ask me a Samaritan for water? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, remember I think she, in spite of this reputation, I think we're talking about a decent person. Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God. Now, I need a moment. I need every eye straight ahead. I'm going to say one of the most explosive things that I've ever learned about my God. He said, if you knew the gift, and then he predicted her action. He said, if you knew what this was, you would do this. Why am I so angry with modern preaching? Because you're taking the most beautiful and awesome and profoundly effective thing that mankind has ever heard. You listen to me. You do not care about racial equality if you leave Jesus out of the conversation. You don't care. Look, you are not honest about women's rights if you leave Jesus out of the conversation. You're not right. You're not against poverty. You're not against sickness. You're not against crime. You're not against anything because 2,000 years have gone by. The atheists have had time. Despots have had time. Karl Marx has had time. Philosophers have had time. They've come and they've gone. And they've had their chance to make this book foolish, make it stop being a bestseller. The world has never known anything that took sadness, addiction, rage, and hatred out of the heart like Jesus Christ. Nothing. If you knew the gifts, she said. Jesus looked at her and he said, here's what I know about you. If you knew the gift, stop. Look, if you knew the gift, if you knew the, if you knew the gift, if you knew what Christianity really was. I went to a school in Redding, California. I was 200 miles from my mother's Mexican food. It was horrible. It was horrible. There was no Mexican restaurants at that time. And one day, my college, my uh, fellow students told me, uh, they have opened an ethnic restaurant in Reading. I said, what kind? Mexican. I knelt down and gave thanks to the Lord. Uh, but then I went and I looked at it and I saw the sign. And th this will age you. This will tell your age. When I tell this punchline, all the millennials are going to go, what is he talking about? What does he mean? I looked at the sign, the ethnic restaurant said Taco Bell. <laughs> and I, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, we Latinos finally have our own telephone company. See, watch, look at the millennials right now. <laughs> then I put the taco in my mouth. My tongue jumped straight up, went to the back of my throat, cut off my earth supply. Said, I'm going to choke you to death if you don't spit this out right now. But then the most shocking thing happened. I realized that my friends believed that this was Mexican food. <laughs> the 
Now, that's what's going on with fake preaching. They are giving you a version of Christianity that has no color. It has no vitality. It has no power. It has no joy. It has no ability to deliver. It doesn't give you the revelation of God. It doesn't give you the power of the Holy Spirit to stand up and walk. But before you clap, listen to the most important part. You have accepted religious garbage in the place of truth and power. I'm still going to preach. He said, if you knew the gift, if you knew the difference between Taco Bell and my mom's chili relleno that will give you a vision of God... If you knew that Christianity is not three songs, a quick offering, we're going to get you out, we're going to pick you up in a golf cart, we're never going to say anything that makes you mad, we're going to take seven words and sing them over and over again 80 times, and you'll be out before lunch, when you could have the fire, the glory, the power, the anointing. Hallelujah! 